Hey, welcome to the vlog. Uh, it's December, so if you celebrate Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Festival of Lights. If you're not familiar with that, go check it out. It's a pretty cool story. Anyways, so let's get to what I've been doing lately, and I have been busy. Let's talk about the hamburger for a second. <laughs> its tires are sitting over here. Now, why are the tires sitting over here that are brand new? It's because the tire compound was trash. Now, it's not just the tire tread pattern, but the actual compound. It wasn't grippy, and we have about 2,000 miles on it, about 1,700 when I took off those tires. Basically, what would happen is the truck would spin with just 10% throttle coming out of my street, and I did not like that. So I wanted a grippier tire. I also went with a slightly bigger tire. The truck is also has two inches lift to accommodate that. This was all in the plans when I purchased the truck. This truck truly has to do double duty. Now, I wanted to talk about something real quick and give a shout out to Deep Overland, who is a friend of ours, and he has a great YouTube video. Even though it's all in Chinese, it is a wonderful YouTube channel of just off-roading in general in Colorado. I would highly recommend it. Check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, but here's just a, a small video uh, from something we did together, just kind of going off-road. And this was before I changed the tires out. This was really the thing that made me change the tires out, is just how slippery they were aired down on these rocks. I'm only running about 15, 20 PSI here, and they ended up slipping in such a way that I ended up scraping the back of the truck a little bit on the bumper. So, anyways, go check out Deep Overland if you like off-roading and videos on that sort of thing. Which was part of a business expense um, because we needed a car as our work truck. And not just to carry a small tool bag, but to go to installs and do that. That's right, we've been doing central vacuum installs. I haven't talked much about that, but I'll show you some footage here from a central vac install that I did. Unfortunately, I don't have the rough in on camera, but we, here we are doing the finish up. So you take that plate off and you pull the wire out of the wall and you wire up your inlet. This particular job site had four retractable hide hose systems. We probably will install Chameleon in the future, but as of right now, we are just doing hide hose. So you finish that up. Unfortunately, sometimes after the drywall, people come in, they knock things around, and things aren't straight afterwards, so you try your best to straighten it out, but some things are just not going to be perfectly straight, which really bothers me. And of course, here's Reggie to talk about the unit. 120 volt version of my unit at home flipped upside down. Oh yeah, it's a bottom empty. Yes. That's weird. Like, well, it's a little difficult to get. <laughs> um, it's gonna go in that orientation, I believe. Now the reason you hear us laughing is we had to come back a week later after having to order this specialty plug. This 30 amp, 120 volt plug is hard to come by. We couldn't find it at Lowe's, Ace, or Home Depot, unfortunately. So we had to finish the job up in three parts. It's the regular true seal, just like the top load units you have to Put the, um, uh, you have to put the caps on, I see what we did. And then you have to put the, uh, the bag. And here's what the unit looks like hanging up on the wall. As you can see, it's just a bottom empty version, similar to the one I have. So after putting the valve covers on, it was time to retract the hoses into the system. Here are the hoses in their boxes, the way they come. Well, remember I was saying how this particular drywaller was a little rough? It would appear when they did the drywall work and blew the foam insulation in on the roof. Looks like snow up here. They got some pipes loose. So when we started the system up, we realized there were not one, but two leaks. So we had to go up in the attic, find them. This was kind of a difficult place to work. We actually had to crawl into a really thin part of the attic. And we ended up dropping the glue in this um, snow looking stuff. So it was quite the hassle. All right, Reggie, if you want to hold the end. This one's just going right in. Yeah. 
One thing we learned is that the hoses really do take form of the boxes that they get shipped in. So we had to unravel them and put them in. And after they retracted a few times in and out, they get broken in and they take the shape of the pipe in the wall. Um, particularly with this hose, having the built-in hose sock was a little bit more difficult. Again, these are problems that the chameleon valve solves. So I think in the future, we'll definitely be recommending chameleon valves a little bit more than Hida hoses if you want a retractable hose system with a hose sock. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me for an install. Now let's talk about the shark review. Um, well, <laughs> as you can see, there's nothing in the tube, but all those Fruit Loops, they got to go somewhere and Sometimes they're going in the bin. <laughs> yeah, not so much though on this particular machine. Though I do think it's really handy. You can unclog this particular model with a coin. I think that's going to be really handy for the customer who does actually buy this machine. Um, you're going to have to do that, it looks like, fairly often. Now, this doesn't usually clog machines. I think the only other machine I had a problem with this was um, maybe the cordless Lupe, um, but it clogged at the bin. It didn't clog just in here. And I think that's just a result of the lack of airflow and how, how this works. It's just like sh putting too much in there at once. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. That's what, what I got. And you can see that it's really grounded up quite a bit. Uh, and that's that's why I don't really recommend the duo clean head on hard floors. Besides, there's no way to stop the bristles. I think the worst thing about this is how repeatable these results have been for me. That this duo head just kind of grinds things up. And the machine does lose quite a bit of its efficiency uh, through its filters as well. I probably now have 10 or 15 clips of it doing this with breakfast cereal and various items. And you'll see me post them over the different videos we're doing with this. This really has been one of the most frustrating things to have to review. I was really hoping for this to be at least as good as like a Bissell or something like that, uh, but it's just been horrendous. As you can see, edge cleaning is not great with this head. You can also see that it left quite a bit in the tile, and that's kind of been the story of this head, is it just leaves stuff everywhere. And again, the design of this when you lo really look at it compared to other vacuum cleaner heads, it makes sense that it would be leaving stuff like this. I'm still amazed that these subpar results would even be acceptable to the consumer. It just really blows my mind. I guess maybe I'm spoiled and I grew up with things like Electroluxes and stuff, but I'm really just frustrated. And that's why these shark reviews have been so slow coming. Hey, big thank you to our patrons. You guys really made this review and all this stuff really happen. So big thank you. If there's anything you'd like to see a video on that you think we could make as a patron, please feel free to let me know. I try to put out as much content for you guys as possible. Um, I know things have been kind of lacking lately. Hopefully it picks up after we uh, get some other things rolling here. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.